Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our inspirational interview series. I'm Hannah Levin with Heartfelt Wellbeing, and I'm here today with an old friend of mine, Jenna Linbo. And I'm super excited to have you here today. Oh, thank you so much, Hannah. It is lovely to see you and to get to spend this time together. I'm honored to be here. Awesome. Well, I am so excited to share you with my community. So Jenna and I met, I don't even know what year that was, a long time ago. And uh, we were wearing the same Patagonia fleece. (laughs) We were like, we should be friends. Um, (laughs) And we both uh, played a lot of music. Um, We were both in the singer-songwriter scene. Jenna toured nationally and was a big star. And and her life has evolved in some really amazing ways, which I want to invite you all to take part in. But let's start with, Jenna, you just introducing yourself and giving us a little picture of who you are and what has led you on your inspired life journey. Oh, thank you, Hannah. And I have such fond memories of meeting you. I think it was at the Leaf Festival. It was chilly and we were at a workshop and there was music in the mountains. So what an inspiring place to meet a new friend and lovely to reconnect um, in this season. Um, So yes, I am Jenna Linbo. I'm originally from Bend, Oregon on the east side of the Cascade Mountains. So think high desert, like sagebrush, juniper, ponderosa pine, a very dry landscape with beautiful mountains covered in snow in the winter. Um, And I now live in Asheville and I've had an Asheville, I call it Asheville chapter one when I met Hannah originally, and then Asheville chapter two with that musical touring and lots of travel in between. Um, But the real catalyst for me, um, I had, I've played music all my life, love music. Piano was my first instrument. I remember my grandpa gave us um, his upright piano when I was in second grade and got real lucky with, um, there were like two piano teachers in town who would take kids that young. Nowadays, they're like two months old. Let's get this baby started in some music classes. (laughs) It was a little different back then, but my piano teacher showed up in a red Jeep Wrangler and like tossed her sunglasses on top of her head. And as soon as she walked up to the door, I just knew like, oh, this is going to be fun. And years later, I discovered, wow, it was so much more than music lessons that I learned from her. She was a dear, she still is a dear friend and mentor, um, but she was really um, inspirational in my path. So um, from there, I picked up some different instruments, but when I was learning guitar, I started secretly writing songs and I never shared them with anyone. And I loved singing, but I would never sing like alone or a solo. I would sing with people, but a little bit nervous of singing out on my own. And, oh, that's a whole, whole nother story of finding my voice, but, um, a, a dear community of people often around campfires and in places. It's like, if you start singing, other folks will join in and it doesn't matter what it sounds like that we get to share this experience together. So I started exploring that and it took some courage to step into that and open up my voice. Um, And then I saw this songwriting class and I thought, oh, wow. Um, And when I was in this class, it just felt like I was coming alive to share some music and to be writing music alongside other people. And Willie Carmichael from Bend, Oregon. Hey, Willie. Um, He said, Jenna, you should check out this retreat in Asheville, North Carolina. There's this woman. She does music, but she's also just really savvy. And I think you would you would be into her. So I looked at that opportunity and it was actually that a women's retreat in Asheville, North Carolina. That was the catalyst for me to move across the country. Because, oh, what I forgot to mention in my story, that January when I started this songwriting class, um, three days in a row, I got news of death, not real close to me, but people three days in a row, um, my friend's mother, my friend's father, and a, a fella I went to school with, um, to college with. And it struck me, it really struck me. Um, I had a lot going on in my life, some really good things, um, working for an arts program for underserved youth, teaching music at an elementary school, and taking this class, like lots of good things. But I didn't have time to stop and really honor those lives and and process that. And 
that shook me. It was such a pivotal moment to say, wow, if we have limited time on the planet, what are you doing with it? And who are you spending it with? And in that moment, I got really clear, like, I want to give more energy to music. And it was just in a season of my life, I was also ready for an adventure. And there was this women's retreat in Asheville, North Carolina. I had never been. I didn't know anyone. But by golly, I was like, yep, I'm going to go in October and drove my little Toyota Camry across the country and um, met Hannah shortly thereafter. <laughs> but I, it's interesting because it really was death. And this reminder of like this precious life that we have that shook me and in, in, in that season to really say, wow, what do you want to give more energy to? And to fast forward, you know, along the way, I met some amazing people doing music. Um, one of my heroes, Katie Curtis, ended up touring with her, leading a songwriting retreat up in Maine that has just been so nourishing. And it was death again, losing some dear friends and mentors that really shook me to say, wow. I've been on the road a lot and traveling and I want to put some roots down um, to be able to process this and build community. Um, so it's been a, a winding, winding story. Um, and music has, has been a steady thread throughout it. Yeah. Thanks so much. It's, it's neat to hear that. I, I I've heard pieces of that story, but not kind of all of it woven moving together. And I know there's many more details along the way too. Um, yeah. So, so one of the things that you've been doing is working with a spiritual community as, as a music director, right? Yeah. Um, and so the, the late, I guess what I'd like to invite you to talk about is the, 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 what is it? The, elements of music because like okay we both did the like perform on stage sing to audience thing and then there's like I mean one of the things we were just talking about before we started recording was like that pull to share music within community to invite voices to join ours that it's not like we're just on a stage and people are looking at us and listening to us but that desire to to connect, to bring in the connectivity and the healing power that music provides that's different from just talking or watching somebody else play music and just listening. Is that enough of a kind of lead in for you to talk a bit about your experience with that? Yes. Oh, that's so rich, Hannah. And Oh, I think in our culture, there's really this piece of like consumption and like receiving or like going to a performance. And I love, don't get me wrong. I love going to a concert and like, oh, soaking up the sound and dancing or just really receiving that there is a place. And I celebrate that. And one of my favorite things is like when there's that sing along element and not um, I, it's about the experience, you know, I, I, Oh, one of the things when I was teaching music for kids, it just broke my heart when I would hear, and this is so common. I think this is so common when parents, if a parent says, oh, I can't sing, like it's pretty natural for the the kiddo in that family to be like, oh, well, if, if she says she can't sing, like, and I'm part, like, I can't sing. Right. So I would see kids who would have this message and it's like, wait a minute you have lungs, you have air in your, in your lungs, you can sing. And one of the things that really helped me on my path is kind of like breaking that shell was I spent some time on a schooner, an old wooden boat in the Puget Sound. And their whole mission was to protect the Puget Sound through education. So I went on with a group of Girl Scouts, like they have all outward bound, all these different groups come on this boat and they educate folks and you run the ship. So you're hauling the sails up, like letting the anchor down, all of this, but it's an old wooden boat. So we would get everybody on the line singing sea shanties before sea shanties were on TikTok. <laughs> but, so we would be singing sea shanties to get us together in hauling those lines to raise the sails. <laughs> and I just loved that there was this freedom of like, let it out. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. It's about like the passion and the energy. And that was sort of this like opening for me. Um, and I love inviting people in and I recognize it can be uncomfortable. And as a singer myself, I found, wow, 
the more that I do it and the more that I open up, I'm like, huh, there's so much more in there. Like my voice is bigger and more powerful than I know. And it's big, you know, um, to be able to have a space where that is just welcome. And it doesn't have to be big. It can be so quiet. One of my favorite things too is learning songs from other people. When you teach me a song, it's like, oh, even if you didn't write it, I'm like, oh, Hannah taught me this song. And so I am connected to you when I sing that. And a dear friend of mine from Asheville chapter one, um, my friend Magda, she is a dog sitter and she's my dog's fairy dog mother, love her. And we had known each other almost like 10 years and I had never heard her sing but she was um, singing to some animals, like a little lullaby. And it was precious. I was like, oh my goodness, here she is singing to these sweet creatures. And she taught me this song that I just love. Um, so the way that music also connects us. And I don't think it should just be reserved for performers or a microphone or a stage or a TV show. It's like, oh, singing is in our bones. It goes way back. Um and so the opportunity to like stand shoulder to shoulder or be in a circle of people, um, that just feels deeply nourishing. And even if somebody isn't singing, there's no pressure always. It's an invitation, but like that presence as a listener and as somebody in that space, I feel like um, we all benefit from that opportunity, especially like if you have never been in a choir or you don't have time to join rehearsals because of your schedule, it's like, oh, let singing be accessible to all of us in different spaces. I love um, hearing people's voices come together. Ooh, I can talk about that all day. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And now there's so much research being done on how it's so helpful for toning the vagus nerve and for our feelings of connectivity and bonding and belonging, just even to hum or to, you know, and, and there's, I, I teach Brahmari breath, which is a humming breath that's used in yoga and Ayurveda. Um, and, and we know that these ways of being in our bodies and making sounds are so incredibly healing there and we don't need anything, you know, we don't need an instrument. We don't need permission. We don't, you know, like singing in the car, singing in the shower. Like that's a lot of what, what people do and, and finding that, um, as, as permission, like as the, the healing that we know is possible to, to not be like, oh, it has to sound great or sound professional or sound, you know, but that it's like, yeah, the coming together, the sharing. So you've been, um, working with a woman who does positive psychology. Yes. Yeah. And so I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about that collaboration and then um, invite us into an experience. If you're oh, <laughs> sure. Oh, well, so through music, um, my now dear friend, Jill Stratton, we were introduced because she was in St. Louis and had been like a concert promoter and just huge advocate for singer songwriters and musicians. And somebody's like, Oh, y'all need to meet. And so we met and it was just like, Oh, one of those kindred spirits where so many like cranial fireworks and shared connections and passion. Um, and we were talking about, you know, music talking about joy. She studies positive psychology and you've probably heard the concept of flow chai. Oh, Mahai Chexamahai. That name is like a mile long. I'm, I still work on how to pronounce it, but um, that state of flow where you lose all track of time and where you're really present and just in the zone um, is one way it's often described. And so as Jill and I were, you know, talking music and all these things, we started collaborating, um, doing conferences and workshops for early childhood educators, colleges and universities all over the country and community events um, to, to engage in conversation about that because the more time that we as humans can spend in that state and really aligned with like what it is that brings us alive, like I believe the world will be a better place when we do that. So the really sweet thing about this collaboration with Jill Stratton, she brings the research and science, you know, with strategies and practical pieces. And then I'll bring music, some storytelling and the experiential pieces so that we not only talk about that, cause we all know, right? 
you can read a book, you can listen to a podcast, but if you don't pause to actually do that and and bring it in and like try it on and see like, oh, how does this feel? How does this fit? How can I carry this into my life so it doesn't just collect dust on a shelf or be back in that, like the recesses, you know, you know it, Hannah, all too well as a coach. It's like, how do we engage these things? Um, it's been really exciting to see. And I, I want to name because some of our work goes with like joy and flow and um, want to be really clear. It's not like that sort of candy coated happiness or toxic positivity. We often talk about holding both because we know right? Like you can have um, some of the highest highs and deep lows. And we're always, I used to think of joy and sadness sort of on like the opposite ends or like poles, but really I feel like as, as I've experienced it in life, they are so often intertwined and how do we navigate that? You know? Um, so we really talk about, I mean, holding both, we hold so much and I'm continually amazed at the human heart. Like how, how we navigate. And so being able to tune our attention, um, it's not, again, it's not like the silver linings are like, oh, look on the bright side, but wow, how can we cultivate some practices so that yes, we can ride those waves when we are on those highs and things are flowing in our lives. And wow, when we need those resources, because things are rough and rocky, how do we access that so that they're more readily available? Um, oh, there's, yeah, yeah. So much. I, I think about that a lot as like having tools in our tool belt. Like we're not trying to push aside any aspects of our human experience. Like, in fact, quite the opposite, right. To like really fully embrace like the sadness when you're feeling sad, the sorrow, when there's sorrow, the anger, when you're angry, um, and to recognize that we don't stay stay in those places, but change is the only thing that is permanent in our lives. And what are the tools that we cultivate through our lives? Hopefully we're gathering more and more tools as we live longer, right? And and that those tools then help support us to live fully into whatever experience we're in because it's gonna keep changing. Yeah. Yes. And so I love, I love the, and I loved that you mentioned, I meant to touch on this before, that that piece that was, I feel like a real indicator to you of the deaths that occurred for, you know, in, in your world during a time when you were coming into more of your own self musically and, and how that I'm sure informed you on so many different levels to, to see the, the power and the connectivity and the, um, the importance of, of both, you know, like to be like, yes, there's this grief, there's this loss and, can, can we be alive? And it's often that our, our deepest sorrows help us live more fully. If we can be in that space where we don't let it just bury us. Right. And so these, these tools that you're, you and Jill are are sharing sound incredibly powerful. So, yeah. So I asked Jenna if she would be willing to share something with our community along the lines of what, what this work is she's doing with Jill. So what do you got? Yes. Well, I would love, love, love just because ah, uh, I love a song that I can walk with, you know, something that maybe I could remember and, and travel with and carry so that when I'm walking the dog or processing something, um, music kind of helps me. Yeah. Uh, to, to process and ooh, it can be, a, it can be soothing. It can be energizing depending on the day, the same song can, can serve a different purpose, but um, I wanted to share this with you, words you might recognize from the Dalai Lama, but in this conversation about, wow, sometimes it is those deep sorrows that illuminates and really can be a catalyst for us to, to pause um, and take stock and thinking back on these last few, like coming through three years of COVID and a global pandemic, so many people being isolated, so much loss, and we're still processing and coming through it and finding our feet and new ways of being. Um, I feel like this song has even deeper meaning to me now than it did, you know, three, three years ago. But um, so I'll, I'll share it with you. Let me see. Let's do a quick little sound check since Zoom can be funny. Let me try this. 
Does that banjo come through okay? Getting a thumbs up. All right, so if you know these words from the Dalai Lama, I'll sing it a few times in the event you want to sing along at home. And Hannah, I'm just going to imagine your gorgeous voice in some harmony. Oh, but it goes like this. Oh, 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 hold on, pause. Let's take one more, one more moment to tune. And isn't that part of this too? Like, for myself, I know that I have a tendency to over schedule and because I want to do all the things or there's, I need to do these things or who's going to do them or um, whatnot. But I can be a little too busy and so sometimes slowing slowing down is a practice and even checking in oh wow how am I feeling what do I need and with music also taking time to tune let us let us take a breath so I would invite you take a moment maybe you'll sigh it out mm, and welcome that breath in and Here's a song for you, and if you want to join in singing, I encourage you to do so. Every day, think as you wake up. almost in tears it's like so so touching I mean and I feel like probably other people watching too are just like whoa that's so powerful I encourage you all to play back through that (laughs) multiple times and just sing along with Jenna and sing along with Jenna and sing along with Jenna so I can see how that paired with learning positive psychology and yeah just letting all of that integrate and flow through all, all the different ways that we can know and feel and learn and embody is so incredibly powerful. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> it's so I, wonderful to hear you sing. <laughs> oh my goodness, Hannah, I miss singing with you. Oh my goodness, imagine. I look forward to next time when we're in the same place. And I'm glad the sound came through. I know Zoom can sometimes be funny. So um, yes, it doesn't do well if we were to try to actually sing together. So the fact that I stayed muted was helpful for your sound for sure. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit more about if people are interested in joining some of these experiences. I know you have something coming up very soon that maybe some folks want to jump in on. 
Oh my goodness. Well, and I love this because, um, yes, so I'm co-leading a program with Jill Stratton at Kripalu June 9th through 11th. So it is right around the corner, but you still have time. There's, there's room and there's time to sign up. If that feels like a nourishing way to like begin your summer, like, oh, come on, come on. And I love the piece that's full circle here is that Hannah, you were the first person. I had never even heard the word Kripalu. I didn't know where this was or what it was. And I want to say you were going up there for a New Year's retreat way back, like, I don't know, 20, back in the way the before times, but it, I think it was maybe 2010, 2010. That, that sounds that, right. right. Yeah. I did a, a really amazing Kundalini and art new year's retreat. It was amazing. I made this big self portrait and yeah. did lots of Kundalini yoga and <laughs> yes, it was amazing. <laughs> And you, like you planted that seed. I was like, um, that sounds like an incredible way to start the new year. And I have actually not been to Kripalu. This will be my first time, but I know some of my dear, like favorite yoga teachers here in Asheville all had training and studied at Kripalu. And I, I do like gentle, very gentle and restorative yoga, nothing extreme um, or acrobatic, but But um, I know that the yoga and meditation classes that they offer that are accessible to everyone who comes, there's also like delicious, nourishing, intentional meals Um, and the grounds, it sounds like are just stunning in the Berkshires. Um, So I'm thrilled to be out there. And again, you introduced me to that and it planted this seed. I know as a participant, because I love like I moved to Asheville after, you know, coming to this women's retreat. I know the power of retreat where you step out of your everyday life and it can feel like such a big investment, like, and such a mm, counterintuitive thing um, to take that time for yourself and to gift yourself three days, especially for women. I feel like that is, is huge. And often it's a struggle and it's in a stretch, Um, but kind of getting out of your ordinary flight path and having that space and time where everything is provided and you can be like, and that's what I love about this work with Jill is like, we're really conscious of like, we want to provide rich and meaningful content and like the experience of it so that, oh, it's not just like information overload where it's like, ah, how can you integrate this and, and be, um, and one, I know that, um, Kripalu attracts people who are interested and curious and in, in tuning into like whether it's a spiritual current or creativity or yoga um, and then all the different kinds of speakers they have. I love the opportunity to like slow down and yeah, have a, a chance maybe to learn or deepen knowledge or awareness and connect, having like meaningful connection and soulful solitude so that you get that blend of both, like time for yourself and really juicy, nourishing connection with folks who are engaged in in the conversation. Yeah. Oh, it feels awesome. really- mm. Yes. I'm so excited for you. I wish I could go. I will be in Minnesota during that time, but maybe another time. I think I would, I would just love it. Yeah. So Kripalu, for those of you who don't know, is in Massachusetts. It's outside of Boston in the Berkshires that she mentioned. And it is a very amazing um, retreat center now. It used to be more of an ashram, and but it is incredible. And you can get body work done while you're there. The food is all Ayurvedic. So it's, seasonal doshically you can kind of find things for each of your your doshas and um it's it's just beautiful yes yeah, so if you're interested go join jenna coming right up um jenna and jill and and experience this amazing opportunity in the berkshires so um and then jenna you offer if people are interested just in connecting with you ongoing you do these tilts um, <laughs> mailings yeah. that you send out. Will you share a little bit about that? Cause I think some folks here might love that. Yes. So, and I love this. So Jill Stratton introduced me to tilt and her friend introduced her and it's, um, things I love Thursday. And it's sort of a community gratitude practice. And I'll tell y'all, Ooh, perfection. 
out the window, I often will post a tilt, not on a Thursday. So I just say things I love today, but it's sweet because there is this kind of current where you know other people are also tuned in, taking that beat in the week to think, like, oh, wow, what am I appreciating? What am I noticing? What are those little details in the midst of like, oh, some really heavy stuff in the world or in in life, like ah, being able to give that attention and like take a pause. Um, it's really sweet. And then there's a spirit too of shared celebration because um, we can be flooded with bad news or negativity and what's going on in the, in the wider world. And so to like turn our attention for a moment, um, it's a sweet shared gratitude practice. And yeah, you're encouraged. Tilt, things I love Thursday or things I love today. Yeah, join us. Ooh. Oh, sorry, the- I'm I'm muted. Um, I I love yours just because your um, yeah, your perspective. I mean, we all have different perspectives, right? But um, I find yours particularly lovely. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, what is Jenna focusing on right now? And I think you know, it can it can sound a little cliche, like oh, we should all have a gratitude practice, or you know, like what what are you grateful for? And but to actually put it into practice, put it out there in the world. And, um, it, it is a healing balm. It's like, what, what helps you refocus your energy then also is a gift to other people. And I think there's so many ways in which we need to recognize that in our, in our lives is like, we're not functioning in isolation. We are connected. We are in community and our energy and our focus um, is, is really, really powerful. So thank you so much, Jenna, for sharing your wisdom and joy and inspiration with us today. Is there anything you'd like to, to leave us with? If people want to see Tilt, how do they join? Oh, it really is an organic thing. You po- You create a post if you're on social media. And often, you know, some, a lot of people will simply type or write it. But if you want to paint your Tilt or do it with a crayon and take a picture like that experience of like, Oh, taking that pause any way you want to put it out in the world. Um, and you're welcome. If you want to tag me in it, I am just dipping my toes back into social media. I took a um, many years break. And so, um, y'all probably know better than I do how, how to do those things. But if you want to connect, um, you might, if, if let's say, you're one of the lucky people who studies or does yoga with Hannah in the morning and you were deeply moved or appreciating a certain posture or breath practice and you tagged Hannah in a post, then that's also a way that she, you know, connects and gets to see that. But I just want to remind people too, like, I feel like all of us, we never know the impact or like the ripples and the way that we inspire one another. And, in being in just our ways of being not in what we always do but like in ways of being and the ways we show up and um a tilt is an is an offering for like this little glimpse and you may never know but that may be something that also inspires someone else or moves them um and reaches them in a moment when they need it so So true uh, Yes. So true. Thank you so much for your inspiration today. Thanks for Um, being here and sharing your gifts with the world. (laughs) Thank you, Hannah. Be well. You too. Bye. Bye.